Oh my gosh. Walter? Walter Williamson? Is that really you? I can't believe it. I mean, it's been years since I last saw you. Walter Williamson? My gosh. Oh, oh, Tim, this is... Walter Williamson? Uh, yes, uh, Walter is a great writer, a, a wonderful poet. Oh, I still remember the poem you gave me at graduation. Just a beautiful, beautiful poem. How did it go? Um, something like, uh, Goodbye, warm sun, as you sink in the ocean. Farewell, sweet sun, as your rays fade. Um, oh, something, something. I can't remember the whole thing, but it was a beautiful poem. Sad, but beautiful. Oh, very beautiful and very moving, but... Sad? Yeah, sad. Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. You don't remember me? Alison Crumple? Oh, right, right. Alison Crumple. Wow. It's been, uh... A long time. Yes, a long time. Well, thank you for all those wonderful compliments. Oh, you're welcome. I, I always loved your work. And look at this. You're selling your poems now. That's great. Not really. No? What's the matter? Well... I started this little business a couple of months ago, and things were kind of slow until I stumbled onto something. Oh, what? Specializing in poems for people who have recently suffered a small loss. Huh? For people whose pets died. Oh. I even wrote a few poems for some people whose plants died. Anyway, that's what the sign is for. Satisfaction guaranteed, or triple your money back. Why the triple money back guarantee? I needed a sales pitch. I must say, Walter, this sounds like a great idea. Oh, a customer. Excuse me. Hi, Allison. Hi, Tim. Hello, stenographer Fred. Hey, Fred. I need a poem written for my hamster. Is he dead? Oh, gee, I hope so. I just buried him. Oh, I'm sure he was. What was his name? Gunter. And could you say something about the wheel? He loved the wheel. Sure. You know, I understand that the loss of a pet is difficult. He's not lost. He's dead. Right. How much is that? One poem, five dollars. How about a frame? The frame is another fifteen dollars. Just a poem. Okay. How about something like, Gunter, you've gone, like the summer in September. But your cute little squeal and your zest for the wheel are things that I'll always remember. Wow. That's Beautiful. You got anything else? I'll work on it. Come back in an hour. Bye. Bye. So anyway, Walter, what's the problem? Well, two weeks ago, this woman came to me and said she'd give me a thousand dollars in exchange for writing poems for her for a whole month. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. So I did it. At first, it was the usual. I, I wrote a poem about a pet turtle that died and for her parakeet that died. Has it been an hour? No. Okay. It, but then it started getting weird. She asked me to write a poem about a wallet. A wallet? Yes. She said it was in her family for years, but I said no. And then she wanted me to write a poem about some brine shrimp eggs and a chicken bone. What? What's a brine shrimp? Just a small shrimp. She had some of the eggs. And why a chicken bone? She said it held sentimental value. I said I'm sure it does for the chicken, and I refused. So she's suing you? Yes, she's taking me to science court. That's where science is the law and scientific thinking rules. We're familiar with it, Walter. Actually, I'm a science court attorney and Tim is my assistant. Really? That's great. I mean, that's wonderful. Can you help me? Well, I'm not sure. What's this woman's name? Clara Swindell. I see. Apparently, she can prove that the chicken bone and the leather wallet are just as dead as the turtle and the parakeet, and therefore I should write poems about them or triple her money back. Wouldn't it be easier just to write the poems? Not really, Tim. For one thing, I don't think she really wants the poems. I think she believes she found a loophole in my guarantee and expects to make some easy money. Yeah, but still, wouldn't it be easier to write the poems? No, because it's a matter of principle. I put a lot into my work, 
and knowing she's just taking advantage of me, well, I just can't do it. Even if it ends up costing me my business. Yeah, but still, wouldn't it be easier? Okay, Tim, I see your point. But I also see Walter's. But that's not all. She also wants to take away my license. Your driver's license? No, my poetic license. Your poetic license? But you need that to write poetry. I know. Plus, I just got it renewed. And I like the picture. Do you think you can help me? Walter, we'd be glad to help you. Good morning, and welcome to Science Court. I'm Jen Bettis reporting. Today is a case of poetic justice. Oh, court's about to start. Let's watch. Well, good morning, everyone. Today we have Clara Swindell suing Walter Williamson for $3,000. And she's also asking that his poetic license be revoked. Really? Can we do that? Sure. Wow. Okay, let's start with opening statements. Mr. Savage? Thank you. Good morning, jury. How are you? Good. Glad to hear it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, definitions are great, aren't they? They tell us what things mean. And that's what this case is all about. Exact scientific definitions and precise technical wording with regard to life and death. We will prove, well, I will prove, what well, one of us will prove, that Mr. Williamson violated his own guarantee by not writing poems about things that are dead. Oh, I... <laughs> Mr. Savage. Sorry, Your Honor. Get on with it, please. Okay. Clara Swindell paid Walter Williamson to write some poems about things that were very dear to her, and he refused because he claimed that they weren't dead. We will show he's wrong. Okay. Ms. Krempel, your opening statement, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is all very simple. We will show that the stuff is not dead and that Clara Swindell is only trying to make a quick, illegal buck. Okay, Mr. Savage, call a witness. Clara, if this is too difficult for you, let me know by sobbing loudly. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to call another witness and have Clara come back and cry later. Fine with me. Thank you. Dr. Bean, will you please explain how scientists talk about living things and other things? Sure. All things in our world are in one of three categories. One, living. Two, non-living. Or three, dead. I'm in the stenographer category. Actually, you're in the living category. Oh. Can you give us some more examples, Doctor? Sure. A mosquito is a living thing because it can grow and reproduce. How about something non-living? Well, a piece of iron is non-living because it cannot grow and it does not reproduce. By reproduce, do you mean make copies? No, I mean make babies. Oh. And the last category is the dead category. This represents something that used to be alive but is no longer alive. So, something that is dead had to be alive at one point. Oh, yes, of course. Nothing can be dead unless it was alive first. Now, in which category would you put a chicken bone? Oh! <laughs> I object, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. Give up? No, I don't give up. You should give up. Why should I give up? I'm winning. Okay, that's enough. We're going to take a break, and I want you two to think about what you're doing. Court is recessed. Hmm, I wonder, which category does a chicken bone belong to? Was it ever alive? And if so, is it now dead? Courtside commentators, what do you have to say about this? Eyes up front, Judge Stone is back. Thank you, Fred. Now, we were discussing a uh, chicken bone? <clears throat> oh, oh! <laughs> Your Honor, Mr. Savage is calling this chicken bone dead, but it is not dead because it was never alive to begin with. <laughs> Your Honor, may I continue questioning my witness now? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Dr. Bean, you're a learned person, are you not? Uh-huh. Is this bone alive? Nope. Is it non-living? Nope. 
So there's only one category left. It must be dead. <gasps> But how can that be? That chicken bone couldn't live on its own. You're forgetting, Miss Crumple. Only organisms, independent living things, can live on their own. But parts of organisms can also be living. Look at me! I'm absolutely beaming with pride. Think about a leaf on a tree. The tree is a living organism, but the leaf is also alive. It's made of cells that grow and reproduce. But if the leaf were to be separated from the tree, like the chicken bone from the chicken, it would die. What's a cell? A cell is the smallest part of a living thing. In fact, some organisms are only one big cell. So, when my client asked for a poem written for a dead chicken bone, that's scientifically accurate, correct? Yes, that's accurate. Pretty weird, but accurate. Thank you, Dr. Bean. No more questions. Uh, Miss Crumple? No questions. Your Honor, I think I will take this opportunity, since I'm winning, to rest my case. Very well. Miss Crumple, you may call your first witness. Thank you. Professor Parsons, could you please tell the court what these are? Well, those are、uh, brine shrimp eggs. <laughs> I ought to know. I'm an expert. Are they breathing or moving? Oh no, not a nothing. No breathing, no moving. <laughs> oh my poor brine shrimp eggs. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry. Are the brine shrimp eggs growing or reproducing? No, ma'am. Oh, those poor brine shrimp eggs. Oh, the humanity. Mr. Savage, will you please refrain from feigning fainting? What? Ix nay on the ainting fay. Oh, sorry. So, Professor, these eggs show no scientific signs of being alive. Is that correct? Yes, correct, Amundo. But the brine shrimp egg is a pretty amazing little creature, is it not? Oh yes, it certainly is.、Uh, given a little time and the right conditions, I could show you some pretty amazing things. Let me tell you. <laughs> What is Professor Parsons getting at? The brine shrimp eggs definitely show no signs of life, but are they really dead? Courtside commentators, what can you tell us about the brine shrimp eggs? Uh, if we put our little egg friends in salt water at a temperature of twenty-one degrees centigrade, <laughs> they'll freeze. Twenty-one degrees centigrade, Mr. Savage. That's the same as seventy degrees on your thermometer. Wow, he's right. <laughs> of course, I'm right. It's my job. I'm Mr. Right. <laughs> That's what they call me. Well, a couple of people. Now we add some fish food. Fish food? Yes, fish food, and we will see that these eggs could not be considered to be dead. What? This is fascinating. Oh, I'll say. Ah,、uh, but this could take about oh, I'd say two days. Your Honor, I request that the entire court be held here for two days while Professor Parsons performs his experiment. Is this really necessary, Miss Crumple? Very necessary, Your Honor. This is in the name of science. In the name of science. Okay. In the name of science, set up camp. We're staying. It was a stormy night at the old courthouse many years ago. The wind was howling. All rise and all shine, including you, Judge Stone. Uh, Fred. Fred, I'm over here at my podium thing. Mmm, just five more minutes. Miss Crumple, how's the experiment going? Good, Your Honor. Isn't that right, Professor? Oh, absolutely. As you can all see, the eggs have produced baby brine shrimp. <gasps> so the eggs were alive after all. Well, my client certainly could not have written a poem memorializing something that was still alive. Wait a minute! Objection, Your Honor. Two days ago, Professor Parsons said the eggs had no signs of being alive. This is a little confusing, Professor. Oh, I know. Let me try and clear some things up for you. Scientists have decided that even if a thing does not behave at all like a living thing, as long as it has potential—that's the key word, potential. Can you say potential? Potential. Potential. Can you say potato? P.、Uh, well, maybe I can't. But that doesn't matter, Professor. What exactly do you mean when you say potential? Well, in this case, it means that something has the capacity or ability in the future to produce organisms that can grow and reproduce. Therefore, it's technically and scientifically considered to be alive. Your Honor, we rest our case. Wait, 
There's a third and final thing that Walter refused to write a poem for. I offer this, a leather wallet. <laughs> Go ahead, look at it, touch it. It's real leather. Besides carrying a lot of money for Clara Swindell, this wallet also carries a lot of sentimental value. This leather once belonged to a, a very dear cow. Now, Professor, the chicken bone is alive while it's part of a living chicken. Isn't that right? Oh, yes, that's right. And then later, when it's not part of the chicken, it is considered dead, right? Well, it could uh, also be considered good eating. <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke. But yes, that's right. So, was the skin of a cow ever alive when it was part of the cow? Uh-oh. Well, is the skin of a cow alive when it is part of the cow? Yes, absolutely. Just like the leaves on a tree. It's as alive as uh, the nose on my face. <laughs> the cells of a cow's skin, like the cells of your own skin, are part of a living, growing organism. So when the skin is no longer part of the animal, because it has been made into leather, we would have to call the skin, or the wallet in this case, dead. Isn't that right, Professor Parsons? Hey, boy, you want me to say yes, don't you? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, if the wallet is considered dead, then you win two out of three, and you probably win the case, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That would be your first win, I believe, wouldn't it? First win. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. A lot is at stake for science court attorney Doug Savage. This could be his first win ever. But first, we need to determine whether or not a leather wallet is dead like the chicken bone. Let's hear your opinions. Professor, as much as we're all enjoying this, I must ask you to answer the question, is the wallet considered dead? Oh, okay. The answer is, um, Mr. Savage, you ready? Yeah. It's no, the wallet is not dead. <laughs> what? Sorry. Phew. Wait, wait a minute. Wh wh what's going on? You see, Mr. Savage, there's one more technicality here. If a living part of a living thing is put through a process, that's a very important word, process. Can, can you say process? I can say it, but I'm not going to. All right. Process. Well, if it's put through a process to make something else, then the new thing is now scientifically considered non-living. Just like the other non-living things that were never alive to begin with. A TV, a pocket protector, <laughs> which I have. A plastic milk jug. But, but, but how can this be? I was going to win. Well, it's not just for wallets. Uh, lemonade is from lemons, and it's considered non-living. Like paper? From trees? Yes, absolutely. Paper comes from trees, but it must go through a process first before it becomes paper for us to write on. So that paper is non-living. But that's just a technicality. The leather came from the cow. Therefore, it should be considered dead. I'm sorry, but the scientific definition says it's been processed, so it's non-living. Well, the savage definition says... Real mature. Mr. Savage, please stop that. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I know you're expressing your disappointment, but that's no way to do it. All right, I'm just making now, a little noise. Now, pull yourself together and let's hear your closing argument. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Walter Williamson did not live up to his part of the deal with my client to write sad, sweet poems memorializing her dead things. <laughs> we proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the chicken bone is dead. <laughs> Look at Clara. She's sad. She's grieving. I want you to look into your hearts, good people of the jury, and then look this woman in the eyes and tell her that her leather wallet is not dead. <laughs> because I can't do it. And do you know what? I don't think you can do it either. The wallet is not dead. Okay, that's one for you. Walter Williamson is guilty of having no compassion for a chicken bone that hurt nobody, a brine shrimp egg that only wanted to be remembered, and for a wallet that simply wanted a nice pocket to call home. Thank you. Wow. Very moving, Mr. Savage. Thank you. Also odd. Okay, Ms. Crumple, go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my client is a wonderful poet. I'm sure if he wanted to, he could write a poem about absolutely anything. This pen. The pen doth bleed its ink of blue upon my fingers when it snapped in two. Or Judge Stone's gavel. Gavel, gavel, pounding loud. Gavel, gavel, controls the crowd. You see, it's not a question of could he do it. Could he write those poems so sad? Could he make one woman glad? Okay, Walter, that's enough. No more was needed. It had all been said. Quit it, Walter. The problem is that Clara Swindell tried to make an easy buck because she thought she had a loophole on what is considered to be dead. 
But science already has its own definitions of what is living, non-living, and dead. I remember looking round me one morning in spring at the rocks and the dogs and the trays. Were they all exactly the same kind of thing? Or two kinds of things? Or do they come in threes? I wanted to know How does it go together? So Daddy used to sing this song to me He said, listen here, little Miss Allison Some things out there are surely living Growing, eating, breathing some things never were alive at all That's a non-living Some things have died That once were alive With three kinds of things you can have it all Okay, Jerry, this case is all yours. Go deliberate to your heart's content. Dear sweetie, here you go, eat, it's lunchtime. Here comes the stenographer, Choo Choo. Hoo-hoo. Choo Choo. Both Doug Savage and Allison Kremple presented some convincing arguments and evidence. But whose side will the jury take? While we're waiting, let's hear your opinions. Will the jury find Walter Williamson guilty or not guilty of breaking his contract with Clara Swindell? What do you think? The jury is finished deliberating and is about to enter the courtroom with a verdict. Let's get back to the trial to find out what it is. Here comes a jury. Let's give a nice round of applause. Okay, jury, what's your verdict? Uh, we the jury find the defendant, Walter Williamson, not guilty. We lost? Well, that depends on your definition of the word lost. We feel that two out of the three items discussed were not dead, so Walter did not have to write poems for them. But what about the chicken bone? That was dead. Yes, but we did not think a poet such as Walter should have to write about a chicken bone. Very good, Jerry. Very good. Courts dismissed. Just a minute. What? We did feel, however that we, the jury, could write a poem about the chicken bone. This is so sweet. Thank you. Once you were a happy bone... Hold it. Hold it. Wait. Court's dismissed. Now you can do whatever you want. You're on your own. Here. I thought you might like to have this. I know it means a lot to you. Ugh, get that thing out of here. Mr. Savage. Do you now understand the three categories of living, non-living, and dead? Yes. I was actually very relieved to hear that leather is non-living. And why is that? Well, now I know that my briefcase can't really talk, so it must be my imagination. Right. What do you want for lunch? 